everyone. We're glad you're joining us for this new episode of The Latest Thread. And we have a guest today, Karen Seaver. Yay. Um, we are going to talk this time about shadow work. So shadow work is kind of one of these things that I think everyone may do it a different way, may interpret it a different way. So we're just going to share some photos and kind of talk about how we do it. Um, you know, I, I mean, for me, it's, it's generally, I put something under a thin layer, if that makes sense. So I have my quilt top, I put something down, put a layer over it, whether it's Batiste or I don't know, netting or something. And then really you quilt it ever. and it kind of shows through <laughs> or felt or batting or Karen, you do a fair amount of it, don't you? I do a lot of shadow trapunto mm -hmm. um, where you uh, layer fabric underneath the quilt top, but you have to use a really fine, like a lawn, uh, as opposed to a mus muslin. And it has to be a pretty strong um, background fabric in order for it to be able to show through. And so I have a couple samples of that in a kind of like a reverse shadow trapunto too. So what about you? Karen? It's fun. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Gives you some wild <laughs> results. <laughs> Yeah, because you don't error. know exactly how it's going to come through. Because sometimes right. it's like, wow. And other times you're like, eh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it changes. Because when you just look at the fabric behind the piece of lawn, it looks one way. But then when it's really sandwiched in there with the batting behind it and the backing behind it, it really tends to make that uh, shadowed area pop out a little bit more because it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's being really shoved to the forefront. Okay. I've kind of done something like that with vintage linens, but it's, I mean, you're actually physically seeing it through where the edges or there's any openings uh -huh. in that mm -hmm. linen mm -hmm. or that, what do you call that? It's not, is it crochet? Like lace? Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of got like lacy um, edges and loops and things. And then um, you put a pretty fabric underneath it and then it peeks out the little openings and stuff. But yeah, it's that not be technically awesome. the same as shadow work, but. I guess that's that layering idea. Yeah, right. it kind of is. I mean, mm -hmm. if the term is not really rigid, then right? It can well, be if not rigid, depending on the person. It's art. It should be right. It isn't rigid. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, do you want me to share some pictures then? Absolutely. That would help the viewers. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. It'd be a good time to pop some on here. That's lovely. So this is mine. And so I like to do things the easy, fast way, because I don't really want to have to trim things away. When I've tried that in the past, it doesn't generally go well. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Only till that last is, snip. Right? <laughs> right. Right. When you're near the end. This one is. So I just put fusible on the back of black fabric, cut out my shapes and fuse them onto the background fabric and then put a sheer, like, I don't even know what you call that stuff, that glitzy, you know, like for making dresses and organza. organza. That's it. And I just put organza over it and then quilted it. So really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun because it's just easy. I mean, it's, you know, we just get the quilt. Right. And you get that little shimmer too from the organza. So mm -hmm. wait, where did you put the organza? Just in the area where you're black? over the entire top. Oh, the entire top. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes it easier for you, doesn't it? Because I guess my fear would be flipping the edges if I had it just in a small area. Yeah. So I think oh, that yeah. would make it a little bit easier for you. But yeah, it looks awesome. It's beautiful. <clears throat> Because I haven't done shadow work, I thought it would be different because, I mean, you said you cut out the pieces, mm -hmm. you've used them on, so it would have been just fine to not do an overlay. So what makes it well, shadow Well, for work? me, because I don't, I'm not a fan of fused applique. I just don't trust it. I feel like it's going to do something weird on the edges. And then I like it to be, you know, crisp. So this way it's not going to, it won't. Mm -hmm. well, right, it can't. It's kind of trapped in there. 
if so she had only done that in a certain place, just that fabric behind that organza or ganza, it would way, be a totally different it would color. Be a totally different look. Mm -hmm. okay. It changes the look of the fabric. Mm -hmm. So think of like collage quilting, you know, the style where like you, everybody, you cut out all of your flowers and all your shapes sure. and then you place them all. And so you've got all these raw, because it's all raw edge, right? Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of quilts for people where they've put that it's t-u-l-l-e is it tool tool, tool. Mm -hmm. they put the tool over top of the whole thing and then quilt over top of it mm -hmm. yeah. so that that would be kind of the same idea and that's just kind of hold and secure those edges okay. yeah i like that idea a lot because i i do i worry about flipping you know those raw edges over as you're going yeah. past they're going over them so i i just think that's brilliant much it's easy it's also one of the other ways that makes it super easy is if you just use like markers or, you know, fabric markers, you can draw the thing on there. Oh. And when you put the overlay on it, no one knows that you just Marked painted it. it or drew it or whatever. <laughs> well, they do now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the same thing, same exact thing. It's a just one solid piece of black fabric. <laughs> I cut out, you know, well, the big center thing, the black parts, I cut that out of felt that had fusible on the back and fused it down. And then I cut out fabric shapes on the points and uh -huh. fused that between, put black sparkly fabric over top and just quilted it to hold it all in there. Very cool. Super fast. Mm. That's great. I'm going to have to try this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm like thinking. <laughs> oh, and then see in those one in the dark, just in the black area, those like leafy shapes. Those ones I went around a few times and then I used scissors and trimmed the shiny part away there. Okay. Oh, okay. So almost oh. like a reverse shadow then. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cleaner, bolder, more saturated black, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. That explains it. Oh, this is me. This is, um, I pieced four pieces of fabric together, you know, from dark gray back down to white. And then I just did, I did a stitch out on the Elevate through some Batiste. And then I put that on top, you know, with the batting. And then I put that on top of the pieced quarter squares. And then I quilted the whole thing. So that way you get the, look of all those different fabrics coming through right and it's, it's very subtle but you don't see any i mean you can kind of see a shadow or a ghost of the piecing line underneath yeah you and if i had used better batting it would have been better this was just a quick sample yeah see this is what i envisioned shadow work would be you know where you see the different you know shadow mm -hmm. on the other fabrics coming through mm -hmm. cool And here's the same thing with just two different colored fabrics behind it. And this one has a little bit better bat. So you don't see that seam line as much. Okay, I'm super confused. What? I'm looking at this and I can see your two different fabrics, but then that white that's over top, is that really over top of? Yes, I took the batiste and the batting and quilted out the design and then cut all the excess away. So oh. it's true trapunto. Okay. And then I, I put see. it over the fabric. I thought maybe it was still there. And I'm like, how did you get it to disappear so well? <laughs> little tiny scissors. <laughs> little tiny scissors. And little tiny snips. <laughs> well, this method. When you go for the big long snip that you cut the fabric. Every yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Well, this method compared to Jody's is certainly not as fast. No, hers is way yeah. faster. But it's a, but they're the different effects though, right? Oh yeah, much more pronounced. Yeah, that's so, really cool. How do you fix it if you make a boo boo? Um, you just get some really good quilting and cover that up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most most mistakes can be fixed. You just, um, I shouldn't say that. Some mistakes can be fixed. Some you've got to start over because you really cut it bad. Well, it's amazing what we can come up with when we're in a pinch, when we're in a mm -hmm. bind. Yeah, we can figure out, right? 
Well, I've used um, things like glue or the quarter inch steam seam if I've had a small mm -hmm. snip, just to kind of hold it into place till I get it quilted over. Um, that works pretty good. But if it's something like silk, silk shreds. Yeah. And so a little snip turns into a really big hole pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was similar. I, I, um, I had a piece of Batiste and I, I cut little diamonds out of different fabrics and very carefully glued them down and then quilted the whole thing. So some of them are just on fabric behind the Batiste. Some have batting and fabric behind the Batiste and then the whole thing was quilted again. Wow. Hmm. You have more patience than I. <laughs> I, I no, I just hyper focus on cutting. That's the only reason why. So um, this was another sample. On the left is the decorator fabric, and on the right, the main background for the shadow trapunto or yeah, shadow trapunto was that um, yellow and green batik. Mm -hmm. But in three of the little OG shapes, I cut out the um little brown OGs and I glued them right along that edge of that decorative stitching so then when I quilted it it looks like those three are different colors I love that if you yeah. the fabric on the left you actually bought that way mm -hmm. it's decorator fabric when that picture first came up I envisioned you taking like this chain decorator yeah. thing <laughs> and gluing it all down perfectly and I thought oh my god oh no I go through the you know you know like Joanne's where they have all the curtain fabric that's on on like 900 percent clearance I'll just yes. grab some of that for this. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me want to go into those departments and right? like really take my time. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love that. Yeah. And that's really not, it doesn't take a lot of time, really. Yeah. The longest it's something like that was cutting out those brown shapes and gluing them right on that, mm -hmm. that decorative. Well, but I think that really, you know, not that it would have been boring without them because with your quilting and the fact that the main fabric is a batik, uh -huh. there's still a lot going on. But having added those other color pieces, you know, just made it really, you know, over the top. Yeah, makes it pop. Love what it. I find so that's so you because we know you we know you are the OGs are you right right but did you when did you find this because it, it would be like oh that's a perfect Karen find it was just there and the little the little rolled up remnants because it wasn't even yardage hmm. wow well it pays to rummage <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I mean not that like I'm a crazy thrifter but you can find lots of old curtains at the thrift shop. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Yep. So this is like um, weird shadow work. I needed, this was a improvisational pieced quilt that I, I, I'm not real happy with it. But um, that area, I wanted it to be more blue and I didn't have the color blue that I wanted it because I wanted it to be like real subtle. So I just put a blue behind the white fabric and that's what you see on the top. And then when I was blocking it on the bottom is when it's wet, when you can really see that blue behind the oh, white. Yeah, yeah. But it created oh, just enough wet, shadow yeah. that I just wanted a little bit of blue there. So you make your own fabric that you wanted by adding mm -hmm. the other fabric. Yeah, And that white was regular white. So you can create just mm -hmm. different levels of white by putting a different color behind it. Cool. Yeah, that's why you never want to have red thread behind a white quilt. <laughs> no, it will run. <laughs> yeah. You'll see it every time. Okay, so this one was one of mine. And, and one of the ideas I had with the shadow work was using thread um, at, to create the shadow effect. So in this particular case, you can see the close-up. I used yellow thread behind the basket weave. And what it did is it made it look like there were two fabrics actually being woven together. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of, for me, that was a, just an interesting take on shadow play. Very cool. 
it was fun. <laughs> yeah, because it's not such a stark, you know, a lot of times when yeah. you use contrasting thread, they're super different. Right. And, it's... and this was a trapunto piece um, that, yes, it did involve the cutaway. So what I did is I layered the batting, um, a piece of fabric that I wanted to show through, and then a piece of lawn on top of that. And the areas that I wanted to have show through, I quilted those areas and then cut everything away the, around those areas and then relayered it with a regular bat and requilted the whole thing. So the first uh, line of quilting was done with water dissolvable thread. And you want to make sure you don't um, lick the thread before you thread the needle. <laughs> it doesn't work. I've tried it a whole bunch of times. <laughs> You're like, this still isn't working. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> what keeps happening to my thread? <laughs> but it was just kind of fun to be able to have that fabric behind there. I mean, the quilting would have been pretty by itself, but I think that fabric behind there just kind of gives it another little bit ele element of surprise. And and people always want to know how you did it. So, but, Karen, do you cute. use the water dissolvable in your bobbin as well or no? No, I don't. Okay. But I make sure that... Um, so one time I thought I would use red thread in the bobbin because it would make it easier to do the cutaway if you could see the thread on the back of the quilt. And um, that didn't work out too good because the red thread shows through. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which was my reference to, you know, you don't want to have red thread back there. So I used uh, just a white thread so that it kind of sinks into that um, extra layer of batting. So I only asked because, oh, I'm sorry, Sharon. No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, I only asked because the very first one I ever did, I said, oh, let me use it in the top and the bobbin so that way it'll just disappear. And then I forgot to change it out on when I did the real quilting. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I went to block it, I'm like, <gasps> it was just all my all the just laying on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I'll never do that again. No. <laughs> so when you use the dissolvable on top and a different thread on the bottom, um, I use the lightweight the dissolves the bottom. You should be able to just pull away, right? Or I just I just leave it um, left because it. it's actually holding um, the the two threads are actually kind of holding the batting and the fabric in place until you requilt it. Mm -hmm. When you get it wet, the top thread goes away. The other one yeah. just sinks into the batting, and you don't even see it. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So just Karen. When I baste something and then I forgot to take the basting stitches out and I've quilted densely over top of that area, it's a nightmare to pull that thread out from underneath. On yeah, well, this is going to be relayered with another layer of batting in the backing. Of course it is. Um, so it gets, it just gets absorbed by all of the other, okay. the other two layers. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah. So that was going to be my question. So after you do the initial quilting, then you take it off and trim it and then relayer it. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to quilt it twice. It is labor intensive to do trapunto or shadow trapunto. Um, but I just really like the kind of the kick you get from having that underneath there. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, the kind of the fun part is people wanting to know how you did it. You know, it's like, wow, how'd you do that? <laughs> yeah. How did you get all that quilted texture and that with the loft to it? Yeah, I've done that a couple of times with some. Right, other, right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. And this one is um, almost the opposite of it. What I did was I um, layered it with just, I layered just the batting and the lawn and quilted the areas that I wanted to have stuffed. Then I cut away the areas that I didn't want to have stuffed. And when I relayered it, I layered the back, a new batting, a piece of fabric that would show through in the background areas, not the stuffed areas, and then the 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 cut top, the cutaway top. And then I also, so you can see in the background that um, the fabric is showing through, but it's not showing through on the feathers because that was done regular trapunto. And then I just cut away the little centerpiece there, like a raw edge applique kind of thing. Mm -hmm. where that was allowed to pop through even stronger mm -hmm. which was kind of fun to do. it's beautiful yeah. it, it just was a really fun fabric to put underneath there because it really mm -hmm. kind of showed through a lot mm -hmm. yeah there was somebody that was doing this that didn't like that you know how you cut away the center and then you can see that little raw edge but mm -hmm. if there was somebody that wanted to do that but didn't want to see the raw edge that would be a good opportunity to go in and couch something sure to frame that over top of it right 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 you could use a bias um you know, like a little piece of bias to kind of go around it. Um, mm -hmm. 
You could use cording, yep. um, a heavy metallic thread or right pearls. Yeah. I mean, whatever you wanted to do would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I cut that really close to the edge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just must have been really small. Yeah, I use really small scissors and really small snips because yeah, yeah. Um, as we referred to earlier, when you're doing trapunto and you're doing the cutaway, the the scary part of it is the cutaway because it's really easy to cut the quilt top mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just the batting or the fabric that's behind it. So I, I find that every time I try to take a long snip that that's when I cut the quilt top. And, and so I just take very small snips. Mm -hmm. Any resistance, stop. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, no, it's fine. And you're like, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing and, worse than having done all that work and then clipping your quilt top. Yeah. yeah. That's when you do have, they have an embroidery machine, you know, do embroidery. That's where those scissors come in that are curved and have almost like a duck bill. Right. I, that's I what I use. what they call right. them. That's you know, what that way, scissors, if scissors. you protect the the layer that you don't want to cut away a little bit easier rather they than also, regular scissors. Right. They also make scissors that have a blunt tip on them mm -hmm. that are really good because if you use pointy scissors, it's really easy to pierce the fabric. But if you use a blunt tip scissor where the tip is actually blunt, it's a little bit, it takes a lot more effort to cut through the, the wow. top of the quilt. That's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. And this one um, was just the start of a quilt that I had done, what was called Sacrifice and Salvation. And it's it's a little hard to see. You can see it better in the close-up, but the S and the cross and the framework all has shadow trapunto in it. So it was layered with the, the fabric or the, the batting, the fabric I wanted to have show through and the lawn on top. And then everything was cut away where... I didn't want to have that fabric show through and then re-layered again with a backing, regular batting, and then the, the cutaway quilt top on it. So I think the close-up, Sharon, is that the next one? Let me see. There it is. There you go. You can really see it in the framing and in the quilting um, where it shows through there. It's just a little bit. The light was probably better when I took the picture. <laughs> Do you use green Quite thread, Karen? I did on that one um, just because I really wanted that cross to kind of come across. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I did. And I used, I think, pink thread for the the feather. And then the rest of it, I used white thread. Okay. That's a lot there of work. Is. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but sure. it really was fun. I mean, does, doesn't, don't you just love the way that pops mm -hmm. through there? Yeah. Karen, let me ask you, because I know you mentioned it three times now, and for some reason, I didn't understand what you said. What is the fabric you use on top? I use a lawn, Robert Kaufman lawn. It's a it's a really fine weave. I, I'm not sure uh, if yeah. Batiste is finer or lawn is finer, but that's what's always worked for me, because I can see through the lawn really well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you need some, Ava? I can send you some Batiste. <laughs> is, sure. Batiste is, is Batiste finer than lawn? I don't know. I've never used lawn. I just like the Batiste because it's it's not quite silky, but it's got a smoothness to it. You okay. guys can trade and compare. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should. Because <laughs> I always have a whole bolt of lawn on hand just in case. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, there are many different ways that you can achieve shadow work. Um, we hope you enjoyed seeing all the pictures and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.